Hi, I'm Ken. And I'm Mary Lou. And, and we, we are, are the Cruising, cruising Two. So this week's video is a little different. I'm doing a how I did it, uh, which is not actually a how-to, but just uh, to show you how I handle some of the issues that come up. And we hope to be doing more maintenance and repair videos in the future, as well as some other different things. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you would, please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. It helps us out. And if you want to be notified every time a new video comes out, uh, hit the bell icon. Thank you. Hey everybody, I'm Ken and today we're going to change the anode rod on our camper's water heater. We have, uh, as you may know, a fifth wheel uh, Cedar Creek and it has a 10 gallon suburban hot water heater. We're going to take out the old anode rod, uh, then we're going to flush out the inside of the tank and we're going to install the new anode rod. One of the things that you'd really be good to do uh, is to turn off your water heater because you don't want you know that all that hot water flushing out all over you so we've actually been away for uh, a little while uh, turned off the water heater when we left uh, and so now that the water is nice and cool in the hot water tank we'll we'll change the rod uh, and get the hot water back on uh, so uh, you know please hope you enjoy this and we'll see how it comes out it's the first time I've done it let's take a look at what we're going to use today uh, to do this job uh, this is the anode rod uh, for my water heater. This is for a Suburban, but you can get other ones as well. Uh, and what it says it does is probably the best way to put it. It's, it absorbs the corrosive action caused by hot water and prolongs the life of your water uh, heater tank. So uh, it's important to check these. They say about every year. I have to be honest, I've spent about a year, almost a year and a half. So we'll see what we find when we get inside there and look at um, the old anode rod. Uh, we're going to need a 3 h drive socket, which I have. I have an adapter. Oops. I have an adapter that is a 3 8 to half inch adapter for the wrench. I have a 1 and 1 16th socket. Uh, this fits the end of the anode rod um, and we have some Teflon tape which we'll use to seal the rod so that there's no uh, leaking. Uh, and then also we have here a, a little spigot device that we use to clean out the inside of the tank. Once we pull the old anode rod out we'll use this to get deep inside the tank to flush it. This is a, a roll of Teflon tape uh, and it's used for sealing uh, plumbing fittings. Um, don't really need too much of it usually. And the one thing you have to be careful of when you're using Teflon tape uh, is that you can possibly over tighten your fixture because when you screw the two pieces together, uh, there's not a lot of friction uh, and you can really apply a lot of force. So it's just something you can pick up at the hardware store. We'll pop it open, the tape's inside. Uh, and I've unpacked the anode rod. Uh, this is it here. Uh, and so what we'll do is we'll uh, put some tape around the anode rod. Um, one of the things that you also don't want to do is overlap the end of the rod uh, or whatever. If you're, using, if you're doing something else like this in the future, uh, you want to try to keep uh, the tape up onto the thread and not have it uh, actually come down below. If you have tape come down below here and you screw this into the water heater, what will happen is it'll cut that tape right off uh, and you'll have a piece of tape floating around inside your water heater. So uh, we just want to make sure that we get this up uh, a couple threads or at least at least one thread. Uh, so if you can see what I was talking about, uh, the bottom thread or two, I'm not putting any tape on. We'll go around uh, maybe two times. That should be plenty. That'll be good. So just tear that off. And so you can see that I've got the tape around the rod, but none down here at this very bottom thread. Um, again, that's that's pretty important, uh, especially if you're working on some other system um, where the, the plumbing may not be quite as large as this. Um, 
You really don't want little pieces of Teflon tape floating around in your plumbing. It's important to make sure you turn off the hot water heater, both the gas and the electric. Then you can turn the water off at the source where it comes into your trailer. This is the first thing we're going to do here. This is the cover to the water heater. Usually they have a little, just a little uh, spring-loaded clip that we can take right off, uh, turn 90 degrees, take off, and we can set this cover down. All right. On this particular heater, there is an on-off switch here. This is for the electric, because uh, the heater runs both on gas and electric. This is for the electric. Uh, it's been off for a while, so the tank should have cooled down. Uh, and this is a pressure relief valve. So if there's any pressure in the system, it shut the water off, but generally speaking, you're going to get some pressure. They hold pressure pretty well. So we can release the pressure with that, close that again. And I have my wrench, which I'm looking at this, I may need an extension. Um, let's see. Um, I think actually I'll go get that extension now um, and save a lot of headaches. I'm back with the extension. Uh, I'm going to put that right on the wrench and onto my adapter with the uh, 1 and 1 16th. Make sure we're turning in the right direction. Right down here is the, the anode rod, the old one that's in there. And you can certainly see the Teflon tape that they used before. So let's, let's take that out. Now, as you can see, I probably should have changed this a long time ago. Uh, not in very good shape. Uh, we're draining uh, what's there in the tank. You can see what a new one looks like. So it's quite, it's, it's quite dirty. There's crud and all building up in there. So I think we changed this not too soon. Uh, so as soon as this stops draining out, we'll grab the hose and flush it. If we open the relief valve, it'll drain a lot quicker because uh, the air is getting in there to uh, flush it with. I mean, this looks this water is coming out fairly clean now, so it doesn't look too bad. But the bottom of the tank could still be fairly dirty. Like these press relief valves will stay open. All right, looks like we're coming to the end of that. Let me grab the hose and we'll clean her out. Okay, we saw this before at the beginning. It's got a little valve here, just like uh, any kind of shut off. And you can see we uh, when we turn the valve. We get a pretty powerful spray. So this is still draining. It's quite a lot in there. I guess the 10 gallons is uh, a good sized tank. The other thing we got to remember to do is when we do change the anode and we do um, open this up, we're introducing a lot of air back into the system. So before we uh, uh, turn the heat back onto it, uh, we definitely need to go inside, uh, open up all your hot water faucets, uh, let them run for a while until they stop spurting and uh, coughing and bubbling. Oh, let me give it a shot, see. So you can see we're getting some more muck out of there. Do that a couple times, let the water drain a little more again. And while it's draining, I'm gonna go get a rag. All right, looks like that's just about drained again. Let's give her another flush, see what we get. Oh, 
that seems to be running pretty clean. I don't see, really see any more. Whoa, what was that? I was going to say I don't see much coming out, but that looks like a piece of Teflon or something. I've lost it to the ground. So all of these parts to, to do this job are relatively inexpensive. Um, the anode itself is certainly less than $20, and uh, this piece here that flushes, this flushing wand, um, I think it was around $7, I'm not sure. But uh, once you get all the, the wrench parts you need for the wrench, the flushing knob, uh, flushing, the flushing nozzle, um, then it's just a matter of buying a new, a new anode every year. Uh, as you can see, the job doesn't look uh, very difficult. And it's not. Uh, it looks like it's draining fairly well, so I'm going to uh, put the hose away. Away. Away hose. Alright, just going to see if it dries this up a little bit. It's pretty well drained. Um, I, I mean, this step isn't really 100% necessary, but doesn't hurt either. These little white towels I buy at, at uh, Walmart in the automotive department and they're like, I don't know, $6 a dozen or something. And use them all around the camper. They're not too bad to even wash them and reuse them. So, And then when they get too bad, it's not a big deal to just toss them. Fill some of that up. We've got the new anode. Put the tape on, I like so before. So we're gonna put that in. And we just want to be careful not to cross thread it. Put the wrench here to tighten. Just be careful not to over tighten. You can always go back and tighten it a little more, but if you strip the threads or uh, something else, you're going to be buying a new water heater. So just be careful when you're tightening these that they don't get over tightened. So we're going to close our valve and we'll turn the water back on to the camper. Uh, right now, I do not have that on, but let's, let's get that on and see if we can get this job finished up. Okay, and the same as turning it off, now we want to turn it back on that we finished. We go back to the little valve, turn it on, and we are good to go. Okay, so we're here inside at the kitchen sink. Uh, we're going to open up the sink here. That's the hot water side. Uh, so it seems to be running pretty good. Uh, but. You really want to do uh, let it run for a while, uh, and I'll go and I'll open up the um, bathroom sink. There you go. You start to see some of that sputter. That's from the air that got into the line, uh, and we really don't want uh, any air left in the line uh, when we turn on the heat. Just to make sure that uh, the heating element for the water heater is underwater, because uh, if it's if it's not. Uh, it'll burn out like instantly. So that's one big mistake a lot of people make when they're new or just starting out is to turn the water heater on before they fill, make sure the water heater is filled with water. Turn some cold too. Okay, the cold looks pretty good. We didn't open the cold side, but it's a good idea uh, to run them both. Run the hot a little more. And then I'll go upstairs and uh, run the shower. Uh, the shower's at a higher point than the kitchen sink, so um, you know some air could collect up there in the shower hose and all, uh, where this might run pretty steady. Up there might still be spitting. Uh, so 
So let me go do that and we'll close this off for now. So here we are in the bathroom. Uh, I'm going to turn on the hot water and we'll let the shower run for a bit. That seems to be running pretty good out. Not sure if you can hear it at the moment, but it is, seems to be sputtering a little bit. All right, now it seems to be flowing pretty good. No sound of any more sputtering. Uh, well, maybe a little bit more. Here we go, yeah, a little bit more sputter. We'll hold it up a little higher, see if we get any air to work its way to the top. If it runs pretty steady for about a minute or so, I think that's good for me. Uh, of course, you may feel more comfortable doing a little longer, but... Yeah, we don't have to watch it the whole time. Okay, I think we're good. I'm just going to turn that off. I'll run the cold for a minute. Well, the cold's running now, and it seems fine. So we're turned off, and that's it. Let's go back outside and button up. Okay, so we're back outside. Uh, and we're looking pretty good. All wiped up, almost dry. So right down here, which I believe you can see, is the on-off switch for the electric. Um, to, to heat the water heater. And um, we're gonna turn that on, but it's a little bit counterintuitive to me because normally on light switches or something like that, up is on and down is off, but here you can see it's marked with the uh, icons for on and off and down is on. So we turn that back on and it should start heating our water and hopefully in a couple hours we'll have some hot water. I just pulled the camera back a little bit so we can see this a little better. Uh, here's the cover again uh, and there are two holes in the bottom here and there and two pins here and here. So what we need to do is to line up those two pins with those two holes. Pretty simple. Alright we got that and then this little tab here, this goes through this slot. So we just put that through the slot, turn the tab, bend it down, and we're all set. Uh, that's basically changing an anode rod. Uh, and after C in mind, I would say I'm not going to wait a year and a half to change it again. Uh, we'll change it in a year. Well, that's it for changing the water heater anode. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And if you'd like to be notified whenever we post a new video, please hit the bell icon. So as we always say, have an awesome day because we, we are. are. Bye.